Working with f-stops and exposures is something that's usually slightly out of the comfort zone for many digital artists. However, it's a very important and handy concept to understand and apply in a linear light workflow because it will correlate what you do in the computer directly to what happens in real life when real light passes through a real camera's aperture onto a real piece of film or a sensor. It will also help you communicate with your DOP and director because those people are much more used to terms like exposure and f-stops and printer lights rather than gain and multiplication. So let's have a look at what the multiply does as opposed to the exposure tool. I'll just bring up the wipe so we see the exposure on the right side and the multiply change on the left and I'll bump up the multiply value to a value of 2. Obviously this will double each pixel's value and now I'm going to go and raise the right side of my image by a single stop and you'll see this actually yields the same exact result. In fact, a common definition of an f-stop in the digital workflow is that each stop will double the value of your pixels. So if I now go and raise my image by two stops, we're effectively doubling each pixel's value twice, which brings us to a multiplication value of 4. So you see that changing the exposure will actually react in an exponential way. So once again, if I raise my image by 4 stops, for example, I'm doubling the virtual exposure or the luminance of each pixel four times. So that's a multiplication of 2 to the power of 4, which will bring us to 16. So you see that exposures are nothing more than a multiplication in a linear light workflow, except they react exponentially. A commonly accepted reference in film and photography is the grey card, which delivers an 18% reflectance of the visual spectrum which means that when exposed correctly, the gray card will give us a middle gray, which is perceptually about halfway between black and white. What that means for the digital world is that when we have a constant value, like here, of 0.18 in each color channel, it will look like a nice medium gray when seen through a lookup table that accommodates for the non-linearities of our monitor. Now let's have a look at the main factors that control exposure. First of all, you have the aperture or the aperture size. And here we have a few standard aperture sizes ranging from f16, which is a small aperture, to f2.8, which is a much larger aperture. So obviously the size of the diaphragm that will allow light to pass through onto the film or the sensor is a big contributing factor to the outcoming exposure as well as the exposure time. So that's the time that you allow light to pass through the same opening. In a still camera, the exposure time is simply expressed in seconds or fractions of a second. In a film camera, this is a little bit more complicated because film cameras use shutter disks that rotate at the frames per second that the camera is supposed to record at. Our script at the moment is set to 24 frames a second, so that's the equivalent of a shutter disk in a camera that rotates 24 times a second. Normally shutter disks have an opening of 180 degrees to let light pass through onto the film or sensor, but you can adjust them to only allow an opening of 90 degrees, for example, to effectively reduce the exposure time per frame, in which case you'd actually have to open up the aperture to maintain the same level of exposure. In real life you also have to deal with film sensitivity or film speed or ISO, but because virtual cameras are basically infinitely fast, we can ignore that for this workflow. So now let's have a look at the spot meter readout in Nuke. The spot meter now tells us an aperture and an exposure time. So at the moment it tells us that in order to expose this 18% gray reference properly, we have to use an aperture of f8, which is this guy here, and an exposure time of 48th of a second. The 48th of a second is derived from our frames per second which is the speed of this disk and the size of this opening which we can find in the viewer settings. Here you have your shutter angle and that is set to 180 degrees which corresponds to this diagram here. If I set the angle to 90 degrees for example and resample our 18% gray we now get a 96 of a second for exposure time which is twice as fast as before and that's because we adjusted the shutter disk to only allow half the area to let light pass through with our 90 degree shutter setting. And with that speed, 
the spot meter now tells us that we have to open up our aperture to an f5.6 which is slightly larger than an f8 in order to expose an 18% gray card to be middle gray at the increased exposure time of 96 of a second. So now let's bump up the frames per second to let's say twice as much which will effectively cause the shutter disk to rotate twice as fast and therefore we're cutting down the exposure time here into half again. So now when we resample Nuke tells us we now have to use an aperture of f4 in order to get 18% to be a middle gray. So let's just reset those values for a second and resample. And the reason you get an F8 value for your 18% gray at the default values is because that is the center f-stop that Nuke chooses by default. So if we decided to use a 5.6 f-stop as our center f-stop, that's where the spot meter would start to read out an 18% gray card. While this absolute measure of aperture size and exposure time is much important for photographers when they acquire the images, for us it's usually more important to measure existing images in terms of relative exposure values so we can tell if something is a stop over or underexposed based on our 18% gray reference. You can achieve that in Nuke by simply setting the center f-stop to zero. That will switch the whole readout mechanism as well as our exposure slider at the top to use exposure values rather than absolute aperture numbers. So that means that if I now go and lift my plate by, let's say, a full stop, the readout now will actually tell me that the plate is one stop overexposed based on our gray reference. And likewise, if I lower the plate, the readout will now tell me about how many stops the plate is underexposed.